Um, hi everyone. Uh, in this group, we chose a topic: uh, a, a journey from uh, traditional to ICT-based uh, pedagogy. ICT is uh, has changed the way of our life. Uh, ICT was used from 1960s, uh, but in limited access. From 1980s, it is being used uh, widely and. Uh, by the uh, UNESCO, it has been introduced to the uh, system of education. Um, uh, in 2011, uh, the UNESCO started a symposium, a yearly symposium about um, ICT uh, learning. And um, <clears throat> um, billions of dollars are invested every year in uh, ICT education. According to the OACD uh, organization, uh, 3.8 trillion dollars are invested every year in ICT learning. Uh, according to the same organization, North Korea come first and Finland comes um, eighth, uh, while Iraq, unfortunately, is uh, not even on the list. ICT has uh, conquered the society today and uh, over 3 billion people uh, use internet today and um, 8 out of 10 of them use mobile and computers and uh, this rate grows continually. Mm -hmm. Yes. The ability of ICD has brought a lot of benefits uh, in the area information process and communication. First one, it makes information processing to be more more timely, with better surface area and even more cheaper. As this informa information is now cheaper and economically valuable, effective and flexible human information uh, interaction, and uh, innovative ways of interaction and communication using GSM technology, satellite, cable, network, mm -hmm. video, and uh, teleconferencing. It helped keeping, uh, keep information available up to date. In, uh, it enabled business and trend to communicate effectively. It always more effective management of resource. Uh, during my uh, visiting here in Finland, I saw that there's a main role of ICT in the learning process. First of all, this was something very great for me. It's everything is touring to, uh, uh, the student based learning. And also, there's uh, supporting the knowledge constructions here to protect the teachers and to the students and to the also to society. And these two things, it's due to the other things. One of them, I mentioned that there is any based learning process. By using ICT, you can. Choose um, in any phase you can learn, and also at the same time, in any time, learning. Uh, this is what lead to the other uh, maybe stage, and it will be the expanding the pool of the teachers here. And also, in the same time, there's an expanding of the pool of the students. When I mentioned the pools, I mean the scientific pools and all the information uh, tools for them and one of them it's going to the how to reducing in the same time the cost of the education finally what is a very important now the student they feel that it's the learning is a fun for them great so when uh, when it comes to curriculum uh, uh, in fact I would like to uh, explain it in, in the context of our mission, uh, pedagogical <coughs> pedagogy course training. Uh, and I, I think it's good if we put it in this way. Why we need to put ICT in our curriculum for, this, uh, for our mission, and what and how. Uh, so why we need to put it in our uh, curriculum for, for, for uh, teacher training? Because in the current situation, there is no such thing, and this one I think it's disaster when we are going to reform our education system. Mm -hmm. What type of IC based curriculum we should develop? We should develop a one that supports uh, critical thinking, competence, comp 
building competence inside the teachers, and the teachers will start to build this competence in their students, and also how to build uh, a one that uh, supports creativity. How, how we do that? I think, uh, and this is my opinion, we can do it in three ways, either as a separate parts in the uh, framework of the training, or as an integrated part, integrated way in all parts, or as a mixed way. And I'll leave the assessment for uh, my colleague, Victor Nazar. Okay, so one of the important aspects when you try to implement this uh, ICT is to implement it also in the assessment. So we have different types of assessment. We have formative, summative, and diagnostic assessment, which is assessment of prior knowledge of the student, or the assessment for learning or of learning. ICT has an important role in the assessment because it helps the teacher to construct the test, to store, uh, to store and, uh, and report about the student task, grades, and feedback, and also help to analyze the results of the uh, students. So here in Finland, we notice that they use the ICT in the assessment, for example, for the formative, they uh, put the MCQs for formative assessment, as we do in the Henry session selfie assessment tool. And there's another important thing, which is the computer adaptive testing, that uh, it help, uh, it depends on the student's response to the question, and the software will automatically uh, change the level or adjust the level of the uh, assessment according to the response of the student. So there are many tools, uh, I think, in the assessment. Yeah, so um, um, collectively, um, there are many tools, as you say, for um, can we use it to assess um, um, students and to update the curriculum. So um, there are two different types of tools. We've got offline and online. I'm going to talk about the online tools that can be used. Um, so one of them is the e-portfolio, which is um, uh, a um, collection of um, digital or electronic um, of evidence um, that can be assembled by a user. The user can be students or, or teachers. So um, the, other, the other tool, it's, it's a badge, um, it's, or, um, it's a digital badge that can be given to the uh, students or, or teachers with the high skills and, and achievements and, and according to their participation in different types of activities. So um, the other uh, tool that can be used is a Zoom cloud. So this, um, this application has been used in our uh, um, um, online, online meeting and that can be used for the online communication and operating conferences and different kinds of uh, scientific meetings. So these all parts or these all tools are quite important to in enterprise and moderate uh, and, international, and to internationalize your university to communicate with the others. Um, based on your information and what we have seen in the Finland, now it's a time to know where is our challenge in Kurdistan. The first thing is uh, identification of stockholders. Then you should analyze your present status of ICT in Kurdistan, and you should know the, the existence sources of finance and piloting choosing the ICT based model. Based on this, we have two types of challenges in Kurdistan. The first one is regarding to the infrastructure, which include rooms, telephones, internet, and computers. While the second one is capacity building. Capacity building, I mean, is regarding to the teachers the skill of the teachers and how these teachers are implementing the ICTs in the curriculum and also the educator administrator and the most important one is the technical support specialist and content developer. Beside all of these, we need a very big, a big budget to implement the ICT in the uh, education. Great. So according to to that, you explained it along with an analysis and report of using ICT in education system, we conclude and recommend that provide in service training in, on ICT integration, provide infrastructure, technical support, leadership, time, and promote access to available facilities. Teacher educators should be encouraged to model and integrate ICTs. Along students, encourage in all teacher 
uh, encourage integration in all teacher education courses, train administrators on ICT integration and strategic planning for ICT integration, generating consist consistent finances to support ICT users over the long run. Adequate provided provision to, of technological resources, modification in current higher education ICT curricula, piloting the chosen ICT-based higher education model. Finally, careful examination of current state of higher education system. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.